is it legal for an employer to trick you into working for them? Unfortunately, a lot of employers make promises in the hiring process that they don't intend to keep. This is called fraud in the inducement or fraudulent hiring and is illegal in California. This video explores the law on this subject and the monetary remedies that are available to victims. You'd be really mad if you went in for a job interview, they offered you $100,000 a year in salary, the position of a department head of an entire division, they'd pay for your moving costs, and you'd be at that company for 10 years minimum, only to find out soon after quitting your job, moving your family across the state, and taking a new job, that those promises were not true. That's what this whole area of law is meant to address. It's called promissory estoppel. It's when, and there's two main elements, when an employer makes a promise to an employee in the hiring process, but does not intend to perform on that promise, or has lied to that employee. And then the second critical element is that the employee reasonably relies on that promise to his or her detriment. This is promissory estoppel in its basic foundation. And when that happens, California case law says that the employee is entitled to monetary remedies from that employer. Now, the wonderful thing about California case law is that it has been amended and boosted by California's labor code, specifically labor code section 970 which addresses the situation not just when false promises have been made, but also when the employee has to move their personal residence in order to take on the new job. Labor Code Section 970 says that if an employee has to move, let's say from Sacramento down to Southern California to take the job based on false promises, they're not just entitled to damages, they're entitled to double damages. It's a powerful statute which will become much more clear when we talk about the monetary remedies at the end of the video. In promissory estoppel, the critical element is that the employer is acting fraudulently, meaning they're lying to the prospective employee. They're making promises that they don't intend to keep. But what happens if the employer isn't lying, but they're making negligent representations or promises or they're extremely reckless with the promises that they're making to prospective employees. Well, California addresses this scenario as well. The body of law is called negligent misrepresentation, and it's essentially the same except for one big critical difference. It's under element one. It's that the employer makes a promise and intends to follow through, intends to perform on that promise, so they're not lying to the employee but they have no reasonable grounds for believing that promise to be true or no reasonable grounds to perform on that promise. I'll give you the simple example. You go in for the job interview, they make an offer of $100,000 a year in salary, you quit your job, you move, you take the new job, and your very first paycheck bounces because they don't even have sufficient funds to pay your first two weeks of pay. Well, when they made those promises to you, it's highly likely that they knew or they should have known that there was no money in their bank account and they couldn't pay you based on that $100,000 a year offer. That is a negligent misrepresentation to the employee. Now, the second element is just like in promissory estoppel that the employee reasonably rely on that promise to his or her detriment that is very plainly obvious in the $100,000 K example where the employee quit their job, their paying job, in order to take a new job with false promises or negligent promises to their detriment. If you're the victim of promissory estoppel or negligent misrepresentation, what can you do about it? Well, obviously you can file a lawsuit. You should call a lawyer to find out what your possible damages are to evaluate whether or not it'd be worth it. Generally, damages in this area of law kind of fall into three categories. First of all are economic damages. Those are the damages that you were earning or your lost wages at the job before you were misrepresented to or before you were fraudulently induced. So if you were making $80,000 a year and then you were induced to go somewhere else where the promises were not true, you're not making $80,000 a year anymore. 
That's a very tangible economic loss that the jury can measure. Now, if you're induced in, to move and you uh, move your residence from within the state or from out of the state into California, you can also win double damages. So you take your economic damages and you double that. It's an amazing and powerful statute. Now, also, if you can prove your case with malice, oppression, or fraud, uh, you can also win punitive damages. Now, everybody's heard about punitive damages, but the reality is they're difficult to win. But if you hire a good employment lawyer, he or she can ring that bell more often than others. So it's very important that you trust the lawyer that you hire. Well, how much can you get? Well, we can't answer that question because we employment lawyers typically don't know the answer to that question until we've looked at all your potential damages, how good the case is on liability, how strong you are as a witness. So it, there's no real way to give you even a ballpark in this video. But I can tell you this. If you're able to hire an employment lawyer on a contingency fee who's a good lawyer, they're going to take their own time and money and most importantly, energy, and pour that into the case. And if you trust them and you do what they say, you'll be more than likely to be satisfied with the financial outcome of the case because good lawyers are able to get good settlements for their clients. I hope you found this video helpful. Take care.